which is Islam, to the creator of the heavens and the earth and not his creation, and a Muslim is the one who does this action, you stepping over and doing this, acknowledging that is, there's a creator, he alone is worthy of worship, and I'm going to do what he wants me to do. At what point did you take that step? It's kind of funny, actually. I think that I had internally become Muslim without even realizing it uh, because I did this research on and off for a year. And, you know, I had a lot of, uh, you know, also as, along with the scientific and historical proofs, just my own personal experiences. You know, as I was learning, I was just seeing things, you know, I was seeing things that I was reading, you know, just manifest. You know, and I can't, there's no way I could possibly explain it. But, you know, everybody knows in their own personal experience, through their own eyes, when something like that happens, um, that it means something. That I, I don't believe in coincidence. You know, everything happens for a reason. But I was actually, when I realized I was sitting in my friend's house, and we were talking and just kind of going over the same blonde, blue-eyed, blue, blue -eyed, blonde haired friend, and, uh, you know, we went over the just the different things that I had been researching, and he asked me, he said, well, what do you think about all this stuff, you know? I said, oh, you know, it's it's amazing, you know, all this stuff, I, I think it's all true, you know, I don't, I can't refute any of it, and, you know, if I were to, I'd only be lying to myself, and he said, well, you know, man, like, you're Muslim, you know, just about, you know, like, Aside from the sh from the shahada, from the testification, the verbal testification, you say like you're Muslim, you know, and that's when it hit me. You know, I was sitting there and it hit me like in my heart. It was weird. My heart kind of jumped. It's like man, like he's right, you know. Um, and at that point in time, you know, I had to make a the decision in whether or not I should continue living my life the way I was living it, or I should start following all this stuff that I believed in. Because I had done all this research, everything I, I researched I found to be true, and now it was, you know, it was time to choose, you know, road A or road B, you know. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that I, I chose, you know, to accept Islam. Uh, you know, it's not necessarily an easy ride, you know, that the Quran it says that, you know, that God will test you, you know, just because you're Muslim doesn't mean like, oh, it's all good, you know, like you're Muslim, it's free ride. No, you get tested because God wants to see if you truly believe. Um, so I've been, been tested in many different ways about it. But, you know, I tend to look back and think about how I used to live my life before. And if I were here now in that same state, like how would I, how would I react to situations when something bad came upon me or something good? Uh, and how would I deal with life and what would I think, you know, how would I be, be conducting myself? Because uh, especially in this society, the way that we're conditioned is just to, you know, kind of, you know, do what you want to do as long as you're not hurting anybody else mm -hmm. kind of thing, you know. And, and a majority of people my age are, a lot of people are out, they're going and they're drinking and they're partying and they're doing these things. Uh, and if if you really stop and think about it, all you're doing is destroying your body and wasting your time. Um, you know, it may be fun at the time, but you know, down the line, you you'll realize, you know, that uh, that time could have been spent doing other things, more beneficial things. A few more points before we come to an end. I'd like to thank everybody for sitting tight through another episode of the Dean Show. We want to know now, talk to us, because there's a lot of stigma attached to Islam. People start to think that, you know what, this is a religion of the Arabs and whatnot. Tell us quickly, have you dealt with these situations where people look at you negatively, they give you a hard time, and what's your relationship with Jesus now? People think now that you left Christianity today, you know what, you have uh, left the love of Jesus or whatever the case. Talk about these two points and we're almost coming to an end. Just briefly touch upon it. Um, I personally haven't come across too much uh, negativity in regards to my coming to Islam. Most people are, are, are pretty accepting or at least I guess you could say tolerant of it. So I personally haven't experienced that too much. Uh, you know, I'm very fortunate. I know other people have. Uh, in regards to with Jesus, you know, before it was really hard for me to accept uh, in the Christian doctrine this the role that Jesus played. Like it didn't make sense in my head. 
Uh, and within Islam, it makes much more sense in, in logic that Jesus was a prophet, just as the prophets before him and just as Muhammad uh, after him. Um, so I've had, you know, a lot of Christians say that, well, you know, you're not truly saved. And, you know, if people people don't want to listen, then that's that's up to them. You know, I, I had a, a discussion with a, a Christian friend and he, I tried to tell him that there's, the only way you can learn is if you come with an empty glass, you know, meaning that you, you have to come in and try to learn. So, you know, that's... I have a better relationship and understanding uh, in regards to that. So you believe in him as a mighty messenger, but not God? Yeah, I believe in him as the Messiah, uh, that he will come back. I don't believe that he shares divinity with God. Uh, I believe that he follows the line of succession of the prophets uh, and that he came, you know, with the Injil, with the gospel. Okay, that's good. So he continued the same message, the same message from the beginning of time, which was to worship the Creator, not His creation. Anything in the creation had a beginning. The Creator has no beginning. It's very simple. These are His attributes. The Creator is self-sufficient. He doesn't eat, drink, go to the bathroom. Anything that's in the creation, a man, he's not self-sufficient. He eats, he drinks, and then what? Goes to the bathroom. Is that God? Is that the God you want to worship? No. So I'd like to thank you for coming and being with us on the Dean Show. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I'd like to thank you for sitting through another episode of the Dean Show, helping you understand Islam and Muslims is very important that you have your mind on and do something very basic. Remember death, because death is the destroyer of all pleasures. You can be indulging in this and that and the other thing, but remember, no matter what age you are, what nationality, you can be American, African, Brazilian, Caucasian, black, Indian, yellow, red, pink, doesn't matter. Death will catch us all. It's caught many people. Elvis Presley died at the age of 42. Bruce Lee, he was 32. His son followed a few years later. He died at the age of 28. Jimi Hendrix, Dr. Dre, you know him? His son died at the age of 20. The list goes on. Heath Ledger, you heard of him? Batman or the Joker he played he's dead too there are many people that have died and they were doing the same thing that we're doing chasing the material world chasing the position but they were forgetting about death this is not a call to pessimism it's a call to optimism to know that there's something better that this whole universe and everything in it didn't just come by chance just like those keys in your pocket in that car it didn't get put together by chance that there is someone a designer, an orchestrator behind all this. And he has a purpose on how he wants you to live. So it's up to you to be sincere with yourself. You can cover the truth. It's innate in your very nature that you believe in a God. I'm not going to tell you all these facts about Islam. I leave it up to you. And we'll close with this. Ask the Creator, deep down in your heart, to guide you. There's all these religions, ways of life out there. No one's going to claim that he's on falsehood. Everyone's going to claim that they're on the truth. So it's up to you to be sincere with yourself. Remember death. Seek the purpose of life. Ask these important questions. Take a time out from the material world and search. Do some deep contemplating. And think about these things. That I will die and I'm going to have to answer for everything I did in this life. Start with that very basic step. Seek to know why I'm here and where I'm going. And come back every week to the Dean Show where we talk about these very important issues. Thank you once again. You can visit us here every week, T H E D E E N Show.com. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum. Peace be unto you.